The chart for XRP is looking incredibly bullish. In this video, we're going to dive down into the technical analysis for XRP, but we're also going to cover some interesting news articles that have also popped up here for Ripple and XRP. Guys, as we get into this video, if you do find this video useful and informative, hit that like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap that bell, select all notifications, and in doing so, you will not miss another XRP update. Guys, with this said, done and out of the way, let's dive down into the world of XRP and talk about everything that's going on right now for this particular altcoin guys we're going to start off with taking a look at the news and then we're going to dive into the charts here to see exactly what's going on so we're going to start with this fantastic piece of news that came out um, not too long ago so i think this was yesterday and um, but basically ripple has become a part of the digital pound foundation um, so this is something that's uh, really interesting. So Ripple, a digital payments uh, uh, a company, I think most people are aware of who uh, Ripple are, um, emphasizes its bet on stablecoin uh, segment um, with a new partnership. Its offices uh, will accelerate um, the progress of CBDCs pegged to the Great British Pound. So Ripple Inc. to support the transition to stablecoins. According to the official statement by Ripple shared on its official website, it joins a UK-based non-profit Digital Pound Foundation as a foundation member. Okay, so this is something that's fantastic. Um, so basically, here's what they've got to say, right? So um, right, we are excited to support the design and implementation of a Digital Pound in partnership with the Digital Pound Foundation. The foundation will help advance the UK's goal to build a more inclusive and sustainable financial system. Ripple adds uh, that excitement, uh, sorry, experiments with um, GBP-based CBDCs will help the United Kingdom to ensure its place in the global financial landscape of the Web3 era. Um, so this is absolutely huge. They join other players uh, like Accenture, um, Electronium. Um, we also have uh, a few others on there as well, such as uh, Avalanche as well. And um, so there's a huge number of players who are basically helping to really push forward the um, the idea of a, CB a Great British Pound, a United Kingdom based um, CBDC. Now, this obviously is something that Ripple uh, have been working on for quite some time. They've already been working with uh, you know the Bank of England um, for quite some time already as well. Um, and again, this also comes in line with uh, the Bank of International Settlements, who also have um, several, uh, I guess, central banks around the world also helping to kind of come up with the framework um, for a CBDC. Uh, and again, this is absolutely key and vital to that mass adoption. But obviously, it comes with some issues and warnings and concerns, uh, and rightfully so, right? Obviously, we want to see um, you know, cryptocurrency get adopted fully and to really change the financial uh, system for the better, right? Um, but CBDCs could uh, help with that issue, but they could also harm that issue. Uh, and basically, they could prevent us from um, from progressing the way that we have been. Uh, also, they could help us progress as well. So um, it's really key that however we move further forward with CBDCs, um, that it's done correctly. It's done the right way um, with the ethos of crypto kind of built into it, right? We want things to be decentralized. We don't want them to be centralized. But the problem with say, a CBDC is it is going to be centralized by nature. Um, so obviously, making sure that the frameworks and everything are aligned um, as absolutely key and this is really where the digital pound foundation really come in joining forces with many different leaders in the space to really help push things forward in a really good and positive way and avoid some of the hardships that could come from a central bank digital currency so this is going to be quite interesting to see how it all unfolds and it'd be good to see that the uk to kind of you know pioneer a cbdc uh, and get it across the line so i'm looking forward to seeing how this kind of progresses uh, in the very near future of course, this actually ties into the second piece of news that came out today, which is that uh, basically XRP becomes the number one crypto in the UK. Cardano is second. Um, so basically, here we have, according to um, you know finance uh, magnets, um, Ripple-affiliated uh, cryptocurrency XRP has been gaining popularity among uh, crypto investors in the UK. The media cited a recent report published um, by eToro Trading Platform. Um, so basically, what's really interesting about this is obviously how we in the UK have um, you know, 
relatively decent regulations for XRP. You know, it's not class of security, it's an exchange token over here. Um, so we know exactly what it is and what it can be used for, right? Um, and I think the US is a little bit further behind in that kind of understanding of uh, you know what XRP is and what XRP isn't. So hopefully once the Ripple and the SEC lawsuit actually kind of gets finalized, um, XRP will have some clarity over there as well. Um, but in the UK, yeah, we absolutely love XRP over here. And I think there's a lots of speculation as well. And I think that uh, it helps with the adoption of XRP. Um, but also it doesn't really help uh, protecting retail investors because a lot of the, the stuff that you see on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that kind of stuff um, is overhyped, right? There's uh, some absolutely ridiculously uh, optimistic uh, price predictions for XRP. And then obviously are the more realistic ones, which are based on, you know, understanding what is going on uh, within the technical data, right? But ultimately what we can have is some interesting kind of stuff going on in the UK with um, basically XRP being, you know, the, the best uh, or the, the best choice, I guess, for retail investors or the choice, number one choice, I should say, really, for, for retail investors in the UK. And um, so data shared by eToro stated that in the third quarter of this year, retail investors in the UK began giving more attention to the sixth largest cryptocurrency, XRP, and putting more funds in it than any other digital asset. And uh, now XRP has turned into the number one crypto in the UK in the retail crypto market. Um, in the second quarter of this year, XRP saw a 4% increase and year-on-year -year growth in ownership has surged by 105 percent and again you know we're entering into a bull run so obviously taking a look at year-on-year -year growth from 2020 into 2021 isn't necessarily a very good representation of what's actually going on because obviously you know there's heavily uh, a lot more adoption in, in crypto in the, in, in the first place right specifically for 2021 um, as the bull run is heating up nicely now obviously in 2020 there was a huge dip uh, in march which really triggered the bull run in essence and um, so again it's really hard to have that year-on-year -year comparison specifically when one year is bearish and one year is bullish it isn't going to give you a really good representation with that being said though it's good to see that it has uh, some pretty good progress and i think ultimately um, considering everything that's been going on with the sec the sheer level of damage at uh, the sec have caused retail investors you know going against their ethos and in their mission statement um, it's good to see that there's a level of adoption here for XRP um, and that ultimately the SEC are not winning against the retail investors longer term. Um, so again, if you're familiar with uh, or were invested in XRP when they actually dropped the lawsuit, you'll remember all the billions of dollars worth of damage that the SEC caused. And, um, you know, I'd like to see that actually kind of um, recognized, uh, you know, because ultimately the SEC have, have not done uh, what is right for retail investors. And I think this is kind of coming to head a little bit with some of the recent things that have been going on with uh, with Genser, for example. So um, interesting stuff. It's good to see that XRP is key in the UK. Lots of investment from retail investors in the UK, basically now bringing XRP in the number one spot with ADA B in second. Again, um, heavily invested in both these cryptocurrencies. Um, XRP was my biggest bag for quite some time. Unfortunately, it has actually slipped down to second place, but you know, nonetheless, it's still incredibly high position for me. Um, ADA is up there as well, but I have most of that actually um, delegated and uh, probably not going to actually sell that much of my ADA to be fair. Um, but XRP, you know, buy and sell during the, the bull and bear markets uh, makes a lot of sense. And um, with all that being said, though, everything's looking pretty good from the kind of uh, aspect of the news. So we obviously have good um, things going on with a central bank digital currency and obviously Ripple being a member of the foundation uh, and obviously XRP being chosen as uh, the number one cryptocurrency in the UK from a retail investor perspective. But what about the charts? As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we have some really bullish things going on with the XRP chart. And I'm going to go through a couple of these things with you guys right now. Obviously, many of you guys are familiar with the cup and handle that I drew out the other day um, on XRP. So we take it from here and we go over to this um, peak just up here. Sorry, let me get the right one. Uh, and then basically pull down our cup. We obviously have a good cup here. And then obviously we're looking to complete that uh, that handle. We haven't actually completed it yet. Um, but basically that would allow us to kind of come out about here, pull down to the low of our cup. We've got to push all the way up to um, the 702 before we absolutely go nuts to the upside. Now this cup and handle obviously targets uh, a key area for us. Um, which would be the previous high 
that we actually set up here on the 14th of April. Okay, so on the 14th of April, we set $1.96. And that is the target of this cup and handle. Okay, this cup and handle is targeting that $1.96. So from the current position of $1.11, it's looking pretty good. Obviously, the cup and handle pattern in itself is only 60 to 70% accurate, right? Um, so we obviously can deviate away from this and just trade sideways and never actually complete that until much later on where we actually then go on a different pattern, right? But this is only one of several patterns that are actually looking really good on the XRP chart. Okay, so good cup and handle, good target of the previous high of $1.96 before moving up progressively towards our 1.618 at $2.86, going up to new all-time highs at the 2.618 at $4.32, $5.78 is your 3.618, and the 4.236 is your $6.28, uh, sorry, $6.68. Now, that is based on the current performance of where, um, you know, the peak here of 2021 so far, the 14th of April, down to the low that was achieved on the 13, uh, 23rd of June, right? That basically indicates that current performance would be a $6.68 peak of the bull run scenario. Now, of course, that is based on the SEC lawsuit actually, you know, continuing and not coming to a close. If that lawsuit actually finishes and comes to a close, and, you know, if it could be a good close, as in their settlement and XRP gets clarity or Ripple win, right? Whatever. Um, even if uh, SEC were to win, I still think we're going to see a pretty good run with XRP as long as XRP is not required to be registered as uh, a security um, because ultimately that would have implications on everyone who owns XRP and I can't think that that is something that they are likely to do slash I don't even think it's really possible for them to do and not with having huge knock-on effects further down the pipeline. With that being said even if they just get fined uh, you know Ripple just get fined pay the fine and XRP is um, or Ripple have to basically register um, their sales to accredited investors. That's perfectly fine for regular retail investors who already own XRP out there, right? Um, and again, that would mean that you could continue to trade away. Um, and under those kind of circumstances, win, lose, draw, settle, whatever it is, um, I do think that we are likely to be on track for a $15.91 scenario for XRP, 1,300%. But this really does require that lawsuit to be put to bed and just kind of come to a complete close. Um, so we've got two interesting targets, right? $6.68 for the um, current performance and the end of the bull run happens before the lawsuit finishes or the lawsuit finishes just as things really go parabolic and we can basically see a $15.91 scenario here and here for XRP. Okay, so what else is on the chart here that makes it look really bullish? So we obviously have a good cup and handle. We can see that here pretty clearly, but there's something else also going on in the background. So I'm just going to remove this from the chart, guys. And we're going to talk about an inverse head and shoulders. So we have a left shoulder just over here. Uh, and we'll just pop that on. I'll just put it over here for now. Um, and then we, we come down for the head. And then we actually have this double tap down at the bottom here. And um, the first kind of tap was the 22nd of June. And then we come back down on the 20th of July, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just pop that in the middle between the two things. Uh, there, those two, two taps. We then come back up um, to complete our, our neckline here. And... Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to pop that there and then we're going to come down for our right shoulder which we haven't completed yet and we'll push this up a little bit here now this inverse head and shoulder again just like the cup and handle would have again a huge impact on what is going to happen next for xrp okay so just like that cup and handle where we can see good kind of progress going up to one dollar 96 this inverse head and shoulders also has an, a basically aligns very nicely to the cup and handle, taking us to again the same kind of position of $1.96. So again, we're looking to breach this neckline, okay? And if I go ahead and just grab a trend line, I'll draw this on um, so you can see it a little bit clearer. So basically this here is your neckline, okay? And what we're looking to try to do is basically push up past this neckline and then we're going to be basically looking really bullish up towards $1.96, the previous high. And again, whether you are a fan of inverse head and shoulders or head and shoulder patterns, or whether you're a fan of the cup and handle, this chart is looking very bullish for XRP um, in the coming kind of weeks and months. Everything is lining up quite nicely, despite the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit. Of course, these kings could deviate away from plan if that lawsuit does go south at any one point in time. But nonetheless, I do think that we are going to see some interesting outcomes. I mean, it doesn't generally matter too much as to whether or not XRP is going to, uh, or say, Ripple win, lose, draw, settle. As long as XRP isn't inherent called a security where basically the US are, are cutting off their nose despite their face, 
um, is going to have implications to the US elements of trading. For the rest of the world though, and specifically here in the UK where we acknowledge that XRP is an exchange token, where the retail investors in the UK have adopted it as the number one go-to cryptocurrency asset, I think that the rest of the world is ready to see XRP absolutely surge to the upside. And I do think that the SEC and Ripple will eventually come to an agreement where they allow everything to continue nicely as it has done previously. Ultimately, um, for us, uh, not just is it about XRP, but the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit is about crypto as a whole. What we don't want is the SEC to have precedent to go after additional cryptocurrency firms um, just because they feel that they can. Ultimately, it feels that they are trying to um, enforce a vile settlement or regulate through settlement rather than actually coming up with the framework and actually doing the legwork to actually regulate these uh, cryptocurrencies and digital assets correctly. Ultimately, it feels lazy. They're definitely not trying very hard to win the lawsuit. And that's quite evident with the lack of, um, or I guess the, the amount of amendments that they've had to make during filing the lawsuit in itself. Ultimately, it feels a bit of a farce and it does feel like the deliberate act is to slow down XRP um, in this particular bull run. Nonetheless, we have performed incredibly well while we were buying it back at 17 cents during the initial drop of the lawsuit and we have seen this thing absolutely fly to $1.96 small correction coming down allowing us to accumulate more ahead of where we go next when the peak of this bull run with an inverse head and shoulders and a cup and handle pattern I'm pretty confident in thinking that XRP is going to be moving up nicely to the upside and looking to set new all-time highs in 2021. Guys, let me know what your thoughts are on XRP price action by the end of the year in the comments below. I am super interested to know everyone's thoughts and opinions. Guys, I'm going to leave the video there, but if you have found it useful and informative, hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe? Tap that bell, select all notifications, and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. With this said, done and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one.